Hi everyone, it's Mike here. Thanks for joining me for another Art Journal page start to finish video. This time we're looking at Journal 52's Week 24 prompt, which is Silly Animals. And you can't get much sillier than this. This is a photoshopped uh, collage image that I've created using images from some royalty free and copyright free CDs that I've got in my stash. All I've done is printed it out into some white card and just spent a little bit of time fussy cutting it out. So here you can see the paint colours that I've decided to use. These are all from the Artiste range from Ducrafts. And I'm using Avocado, uh, Christmas Green, Lagoon and Bahama Blue. I'm using my large Dilusions journal. I've not pre-gessoed the pages this time. I'm going to be applying the paint directly onto the pages as they are. So in between each paint application, I will be heat setting it uh, to make sure it's all nice and dry before I put the next colour on. And I'll also be cleaning my brush between each colour as well. And we're starting off with the avocado colour. And this is the Lagoon. And the next colour we're going to be using is the Christmas Green Artiste acrylic paint. And finally, the last colour to go on is going to be the Bahama Blue. And all I'm doing is just adding the colour in random positions all over the page. It's nothing planned, it's completely freeform and I'm just allowing the shape and the form of the paint just to do its own thing. Okay, so now I've got all four colours laid down. I'm going to go back in and start adding some more colour, um, more of the same. So again, this is the Christmas green that I'm using now, just in the areas that I think need it the most. So one more final clean of the brush and then I'm going to be bringing out the, uh, the white gesso. So I'd already pre kind of thought about the layout of the page and where I wanted certain elements to go. So this um, section that I'm doing now is where my, my quote, my writing is going to go. So I'd already sort of drawn the pencil marks on the page to show where I wanted it to be uh, and how far to paint the white gesso up the page. Okay, so I've given that section a couple of coats and you can still see the paint underneath, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. 
Now using the avocado paint again, I'm going to create just a little bit of a border to that white uh, text section just to tidy it up a little bit and just to tie the colour scheme all together. And while I've got a little bit of spare paint, I'll also add a few little highlights and a few dobs and dots here and there. So the next step, I'm bringing out the heavy artillery, by, I mean the white acrylic paint, and I'm also going to be using a proper stencil brush. This is a Dreamweaver stencil brush, and I have a quatrefoil stencil, stencil from a company called That Special Touch. Now all I'm going to be doing is just putting some stenciling in strategic areas around the page. And the reason I'm using the white acrylic paint rather than gesso is that the white acrylic paint is pretty much opaque, whereas if I'd used the gesso, you would see some of the paint showing through. So just creating three areas of the stenciling, creating a visual triangle around the page. And this is a, an animal print stencil, and I'm sorry, but I have absolutely no idea where I got this one from. Um, there was nothing on the packaging, so I can't really say where it is. If anybody recognizes it, please just leave me a comment below so I can update my records. So again, just creating a visual triangle with this stencil too. Now I put far too much white paint down on my craft mat so you'll see in a second I'm going to attempt to put some of it back in the pot. Waste not want not. So I'm now just checking the positioning on the page before I'm ready to stick my collage element down and then working out where my text is going to go. So I'm just drawing in some pencil lines that I will try to erase later, but it goes completely, as we say in the trade, T-U, uh, and you'll see what happens later. So I'm using gel medium just to cover a section of the page, and then I will paint the back of my collage element um, with the excess that's on the brush, and then I will stick it down to the page. So I'm making sure that I also get the gel medium all over all sections of my collage element so that, uh, so that it's all sealed well and truly and stuck down. So now that everything's dry, I'm bringing out the Faber-Castell Big Brush Pit Pen, and this color is the Caput Mortem, which is a dark brown. And all I'm doing is I'm going around the right-hand side of my collage element just to give it a little bit of shading. Now, the Big Brush Pens, if you've never seen them before, or the Pit Pens, are India ink, which means that while they're still wet, they are very, very pliable and you can blend them with your fingers with a stump or anything like that. But when they dry, they are completely permanent. And I'm bringing out the food ball pen. This is a food ball 1.5. And I'm just going around the entire of the outline of, the, um, of my shape just to make it pop a little bit off the page. So 
sometimes outlining in black really does help to bring elements that you've got on a page particularly when the colors kind of blend together if you add a black outline it really does make it stand out from the background okay so now I'm going to just with a pencil I'm going to do a dry run try writing out where I want my um, my writing to go just to make sure that it is going to fit and that I'm not going to end up squashing it all in at the edge of the page doing fancy lettering is one of those things that I need to get around to practicing and actually developing a nice style for my art journals at the minute I'm just using my normal handwriting which sometimes isn't always the best um, best way to sometimes use stamp sets too. Now here uh, I made a slight mistake, I wrote a word down in the wrong place and I decided that I was going to erase it and try and get rid of it and then all the pencils smudged because I was writing on gesso. So I've carried on trying to space out my wording um, but what I will do to recover from this is I will paint over it with gesso and then rewrite it again using the food ball pen later. Using the gesso just blankets it all out and blends it all in so you can't see any of those marks underneath. And I think I end up using two coats of gesso. This is one of the great things about art journaling. If you don't like it, paint over and start again. So coat number one and then I added a second coat but I didn't film that part because I didn't think you'd really want to see me doing the same thing twice. So this is the food ball 1.5 so I'm actually committing myself now to actually writing it all out so I know it will fit so no mistakes here please. I will hold the book up to the camera in a second so you can read it better but I didn't realize that I was moving too quickly for you to read each line so I will include a photograph at the end so you can read it all in one go. So here I'm just going around the collage picture of the, the zebra man um, just highlighting some of the areas on the, the actual drawing itself or the actual collage element itself just separating each item and giving it a black outline just to tie it all in together. And just to tie all the black in, I'm now adding some just random doodle dots or doodles along that border part. Uh, and I will just decorate those just to give it a little bit more interest. You do have to be careful when using the food bowl. Although it will write on acrylic paint, it does stay wet for a little while. So you've just got to be careful that you don't smudge where you've just written over.
and I think that's pretty much it for this page. All I have to do now is just to date stamp it and sign it and I'm going to be calling this page done. So once again, I hope you've enjoyed watching my process video for this app journal page and that you'll give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. And if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so at the end of the video just by clicking the button.